السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو دا کورس پرنسپل ان اینیمل لائف ٹو دس از لیکچر نمبر فورٹی فور دا ٹاپک از اسپیشیز اینڈ اسپیسیشن ڈسکسنگ ایجنڈا فار دا ٹاپک از انٹروڈکشن ایلوپیٹرک اسپیسیشن دا پروسیز آف ایلوپیٹرک اسپیسیشن سمپیٹرک اسپیسیشن فیکٹرز ریسپانسبل فار سمپیٹرک اسپیسیشن لیکچر آؤٹ کم آفٹر واچنگ اینڈ لسننگ دس لیکچر اسٹوڈنٹس ول نو اباؤٹ ڈفرینٹ موڈس آف اسپیسیشن انٹروڈکشن دا مسٹری آف مسٹریز دیٹ کیپٹیویٹیڈ ڈارونس attention was speciation speciation is the process in which new species arises from pre-existing species or it is a process in which one species splits into two or more species why speciation fascinated darwin and many other biologists because speciation is responsible for the tremendous diversity that exists in life and repeatedly yielding new species that differ from the existing ones speciation explains not only the differences between the living organisms living organisms are different phenotypically from each other and this is as a result of this process speciation whereas there are similarities between living organisms and the reason for that is they have a common ancestor they evolved from a common ancestor so speciation explains both the diversity in life and the unity in life now speciation is of three types of uh, allopatric sympatric and parapatric but in this lecture we will discuss only two types uh, so speciation can take place with allopatric or without sympatric geographic separation two populations are separated by a barrier by a mountain range or by a desert or by a sea or by something else which prevents migration between the two populations uh, so with the passage of time different factors will act on the two populations uh, and they will evolve into two different species uh, so this is called allopatric allo means different and patria means homeland uh, so when two populations are farther away from each other they are separated by a barrier then they develop into two different species with the passage of time and this type of speciation is called allopatric speciation the other type of speciation is sympatric speciation sympatric speciation occurs within the same geographic location there are no physical barriers so it is a slightly uh, confusing process because Ernest Mayer who was the founder of the biological species concept uh, he was a famous ornithologist evolutionary biologist uh, he said that allopatric speciation is the most common form of speciation and perhaps the only form of speciation because 
you can imagine that the two species if there is no gene flow between them then they will develop differences over the passage of time but here the two individuals are living in the same geographic locality in the same area there is no barrier for the gene flow so how such circumstances give rise to two new species from a single ancestral stock so therefore it is a bit confusing so in allopatric speciation the populations are geographically isolated they are living in different areas they are separated by some kind of barrier which prevents the migration between the two populations which prevents the gene flow and uh, if there is no gene flow between the two populations then with the passage of time uh, their genotype and allelic frequency will deviate and change from one another and if there is uh, any kind of communication between the two then they will tend to have same uh, genetic makeup with the passage of time so a barrier is important a reproductive isolation process is important between the two populations so therefore it is confusing that how a single population uh, has individuals who develop reproductive isolation they are living in the same area in the same environment so how it is possible so the gene flow is interrupted between populations of the existing species that is allopatric speciation while in sympatric speciation there is no barriers the population or the species evolve within the same geographic locality so in the subsequent slides we will study that yes it's understandable that the two populations living in different areas separated by a barrier will uh, tend to have different allelic and genotype frequencies with the passage of time but how it is possible for two individuals living in the same area now this is a diagrammatic representation of the two types of speciation allopatric speciation allo means different patria means homeland or fatherland so you can see here this is uh, two water bodies and they are separated by a uh, terrestrial piece of uh, land so the species cannot move that uh, and they cannot mix up and exchange genes uh, so with the passage of time they uh, different factors will act on them and they will develop differences in the genetic composition and thus evolve into two different species now how speciation occurs here two populations and they are exchanging genes with each other the individuals from this population can come here and vice versa so how a speciation is going to uh, occur in such a population this is sympatric speciation where speciation occurs within the same geographic uh, locality and there is no barrier so first we discuss allopatric uh, speciation so it is from the greek word elos means other and patra means homeland in allopatric speciation gene flow is interrupted when a population is divided into geographically isolate subpopulations suppose there is a population living in a particular area and with the passage of time this population divides into two groups in two subpopulations and the division takes place in such a way where there is no link 
no communication between the two populations so then each population will develop into a different species now what kind of barriers uh, or geographic uh, uh, isolates may be present uh, they may be like lakes sea river or desert uh, or an area where there are lot of predators and the animals uh, just are afraid to uh, pass through that particular zone so and the process of uh, geologic remodeling also takes place uh, and this process shifts uh, the position of the mountains uh, sometimes a mountain range arises uh, sometime a valley is created and the river keeps flowing in a particular area and sometimes this river finds another alternative path uh, and sometimes the river keep uh, flowing and the bottom area is cut with the passage of time until a deep canyon is developed uh, and the famous example for that is the grand canyon which is present in uh, america it is the example of a lopatric speciation where the individuals living on the both banks of the river are different from one another So elopatric speciation can also occur without geologic remodeling. Geologic remodeling is the change or the alteration in the structure or style or form of the earth's surface. So it's the such as when individuals colonize a remote area and their descendants become geographically isolated from the parent population for example cormorant is a flightless bird uh, and uh, it lives on the galapagos islands uh, and this bird is thought to have evolved from another ancestral bird which used to live on the South American mainland. So the ancestral bird who had the ability to fly and it moved to Galapagos Island and then at the Galapagos Island these uh, groups evolved from that ancestral stock. So this is also the example of allopatric speciation. Another example of allopatric speciation is of course the evolution of the 14 species of finches that are found on different parts of the Galapagos Island. Uh, their ancestor also used to live on the South American mainland and then when it migrated to the Galapagos Island the members of the population spread into different habitats uh, where they came across different types of food items so their big structure developed accordingly and a single ancestral species evolved into 14 different species of finches and thus provides an example to allopatric speciation now how allopatric speciation takes place uh, first uh, the most important thing in allopatric speciation is that the two populations must not have gene flow between them that is they must be separated by a formidable barrier 
and this barrier should prevent any sort of communication between the two populations. Uh, if the communication remains between the two populations, then they will not evolve into different species because their genetic makeup will become more and more similar because of the migration of the individuals and mating in the populations. So the most important thing is reproductive isolation and it is possible when a barrier is a formidable barrier, a great barrier which just closes the doors of Combu combining uh, members of the two populations. Now, the question arises here is that how formidable, how big uh, the barrier must be. Now, it depends upon the type of species which is under consideration. Uh, a barrier must be a formidable one, a huge one for one type of species and uh, must not be of that much significance for another for example birds mountain lions and coyotes can cross rivers and canyons canyons is a deep uh, Canyon is a deep gorge or a valley that is formed by the continuous flow of river water in a particular area. As the river flows, it erodes uh, uh, the bottom surface and uh, with the passage of time, uh, the river just deepens and deepens and the, the two sides of the banks uh, looks completely two different territories. Uh, you can have the images of the Grand Canyon in America where the squirrel populations on both sides of the canes are different from one another and it provides an example to the allopatric speciation. Now we are talking about how formidable a barrier should be to prevent the gene flow between two populations. Uh, so it uh, is related with the type of the species which is under consideration. Uh, now a river is not a formidable barrier for birds, mountain lions or coyotes, uh, but it is a formidable barrier for small rodents uh, like squirrels or mice or rats. Uh, Once geographic isolation has occurred, these separated gene pools may diverge, uh, they may change from each other and uh, different factors can act on them and a species can evolve into other uh, forms. Uh, different mutation arises in natural selection and genetic drift may alter allele frequencies in different ways in the separated populations uh, and the separated populations evolve into two different species. Here is an example of the allopatric speciation on Andrus Island in the Bahamas population of mosquito fish Gambusia Hoopsie. Why it is called mosquito fish? Because it usually feeds upon the larvae of the mosquitoes uh, and it is also used as a biological control for malaria. The common form which is used for such purpose is Gambusia effinis. So here is another species of mosquito fish Gambusia hoopsi and it colonizes a series of ponds that later become isolated from one another. So there were a series of ponds uh, and these ponds, the fauna, fauna of these ponds or the fauna is usually referred to animal 
on the so the fauna of that ponds uh, had communication with them each with each other but then with the passage of time the individual ponds got isolated from one another and uh, the species isolated from one another spe species of mosquito fish so then what happened after the isolation of the populations uh, the genetic analysis indicate that little or no gene flow currently occurs between the ponds so suppose initially this is these are a series of ponds and initially we can assume that the water level was higher the water level was higher so the fishes living in the individual ponds could migrate to other ponds uh, and then there was no difference in the genotype and allelic frequency but then what happened with the passage of time with the passage of time the level of water decreased uh, and uh, now with the passage of time what happened the level of water it decreased suppose the level of water drop to this and this and this so now the fishes just cannot cross this terrestrial area and move here they used to do that but at that time the water level was higher now the water level has uh, is low so now they are confined to their individual ponds and they became subpopulations uh, and gene flow is not possible between them now so the genetic analysis of the fishes living in the individual ponds suggests uh, that there is no or little gene flow and the environment of these ponds is similar uh, except that some of the ponds contain predatory fishes predatory fishes means those fishes which feed upon mosquito fish so in some ponds the uh, concentration of predatory fishes is greater in others it is lesser so now it is a variation in the environment of the ponds what is the variation the presence and number of the predator fishes so now uh, let's see how the individuals in these ponds uh, adopt themselves uh, according to that uh, changed environment uh, and uh, the change which they which occurred in their uh, body form was that in the ponds where the fishes predatory fishes were in higher concentration the fishes developed a streamlined body the mosquito fishes living in the ponds uh, where their predators were higher so they developed a streamlined body and the purpose was to escape to swim to move uh, fastly and avoid the predators whereas in those ponds where the predatory fishes were not present uh, so there was no need for speed here therefore the body shaped uh, body shape was adopted and the adaptation favored long steady swimming instead of fast so you can see here these two adaptations uh, makes these two species favorable to these conditions which are on offer from the environment 
here is another example of allopatric speciation the north america and south america are joined with each other by a piece of land and this land piece is known as isthmus of panama so isthmus of panama is the only land communication between north america and south america and once upon a time there was no land connection this isthmus of panama developed in the last few thousand years it was not there before so the flow or the movement of uh, fishes on both side was free there was no barrier and then this barrier was established by the isthmus of panama so the two populations became isolated from one another so the 30 species of snapping shrimp shrimp is an invertebrate in the genus Elpheus that live of the isthmus of panama the land bridge that connects south and north america so once upon a time there was no isthmus of panama there was no barrier and there was free movement and migration and gene flow and uh, when it established it divided it demarcated the two populations so 15 of the 30 species of shrimp that are found uh, there 15 of them are on the atlantic side uh, on this side the other 15 are on the pacific side and uh, once upon a time there was no barrier and when the barrier established uh, the uh, population got separated and evolved before the isthmus formed gene flow could occur between the atlantic and pacific populations of snapping shrimp when there was no isthmus of Panama, there was a free uh, movement across this area. So did the species on different sides of the isthmus originate by allopatric speciation? Yes. Morphological and genetic data group these shrimps into 15 pairs of sister species sister species are pairs whose member species are each other's closest relatives so there are 15 sister species means uh, one inhabitant on one side has very close relationship genetic relationship with another member that lives on the other side of the uh, isthmus of panama so 15 closely related groups or pairs are formed and these pairs are called sister species now in each of these 15 pairs one of the sister species lives on the atlantic side of the isthmus while the other lives on the pacific side so the genetic and molecular data has revealed uh, that those 30 species can be grouped into 15 sister groups uh, and the individual members of a group one lives each on the each side of the isthmus of panama this fact strongly suggests that the two species arose as a consequence of geographic isolation 
or geographic separation that is after the formation of the asthmas. Furthermore, the genetic analysis indicate that the Elpheus species originated from 9 to 3 million years ago. What it means it can simply be related to the time when the isthmus of Panama was established between the two continents. Only then the speciation process must have started. So these were a few examples from the allopatric speciation uh, which according to Ernst Mayer is the most common form of speciation. Uh, and now we move on to the sympatric speciation uh, which occurs in the same area, in the same geographic locality, the members of a population lives together closely gene flow is between them and they still evolve into different populations uh, how because they are exposed to the same environmental conditions uh, so from where this agent or this stimulus of change comes uh, which diverge the members of the population into different species uh, so in sympatric speciation, it is from the Greek word sin, means together speciation occurs in populations that live in the same geographic area. Now how can reproductive barriers form between sympatric populations? The reproductive barrier means the stoppage of gene flow so how it is going to take place if the population and its members are living close together in the same area if you compare it with a uh, allopatric speciation then there is a formidable barrier which prevents the gene flow what happens there so such contact makes sympatric speciation less common than allopatric speciation. However, sympatric speciation can occur if gene flow is redu reduced by such factors as polyploidy, sexual selection, and habitat differentiation. So these three agents or factors, uh, they can cause the members of a population living in a particular area to diverge genetically from each other and evolve into different species. And remember that these factors can also promote allopatric speciation. Now Polyploidy, I hope all of you know polyploidy. It is a condition in which the individual has extra set of chromosomes due to accidents in cell division. So we are deployed uh, and then there are individuals in the wild environment that are 3N or 4N or 5N so means they have five copies of each type of chromosome we humans are 2N we have two copies of each type of chromosome so a polyploidy is a f kind of factor that can result in speciation in a single generation in a very short time polyploidy can produce a new species form a new species from the parental population 
let's see how it occurs polyploid speciation occurs occasionally in animals it is less common in animals uh, because maybe the animals are not that resistant to chromosomal abnormalities uh, but there are few examples in animals like the great tree frog uh, hyla versicolor is thought to have originated in this way polyploid is more common in plants uh, a botanist might uh, give you a more satisfactory answer to that question but I personally believe that the plants are more resistant to chromosomal abnormalities as compared to animals uh, so that's why polyploidy is one huge factor in the evolution and diversity of plants in fact botanists estimate that more than 80 percent of the plant species alive today are descended from ancestors that formed by polyploid speciation so 80 percent of the plant species that are existing today they evolved uh, from ancestral species uh, and these ancestral species were polyploid themselves two distinct forms of polyploidy have been observed in plants populations and a few animals uh, you can have uh, even tetraploid pentaploid hexaploid and octaploidy in fishes uh, fishes are usually uh, a bit resistant to this condition because it is common in the mm, w environment where the fishes live uh, because in majority of the fishes the reproduction is external uh, so in water there are sperms flowing there are eggs flowing uh, and uh, sometimes the fertilization of the sperm and egg belonging to different species takes place uh, and usually such zygote has abnormal chromosome complement and it dies away but sometimes it survives and develops into a, a complete organism and sometimes it can even produce on its own and secondly auto uh, polyploidy is more common in plants because the plants have self fertilization means the sperms can be produced a diploid sperm can be produced and a diploid egg can be produced by the same plant uh, and the fusion of these diploid gametes can give rise to a tetraploid plant in just a single generation so the first one is autoploidy autoploid from the greek auto means self is an individual that has more than two chromosome sets uh, that are all derived from a single species so we cannot call such an individual who resulted from autoploidy as a hybrid uh, because the parent plant is a single plant and courtesy of self-fertilization it evolved from a single plant instead of two parents uh, so how it happens uh, suppose this is a diploid cell here only three chromosome pairs are shown so two in number is six uh, and because of some errors in the cell division uh, the chromosomes are unable to separate from each other and all the chromosomes end up in one cell and a tetraploid cell is formed a tetraploid cell with 4n chromosome number 
so this individual or this cell can form gametes uh, suppose it is a germ stem cell and then it form gametes uh, so the gametes form from this germ line cell will be 2n and if the plant is a self fertilizing one then the sperms will be 2n and the eggs will also be 2n so the fusion of 2n sperm and egg can produce a tetraploid individual in a single generation now don't get lost into that word and relate it with sympatric speciation we are talking about speciation in a particular geographic locality so this is one mechanism mutation some kind of abnormality in cell division occurred it uh, produced a tetraploid cell and suppose this tetraploid cell was a germ line stem cell and then it produced a haploid cell uh, a 2n cell from a 4n cell because the gametes are haploid so here the 2n can be considered as a haploid of 4n so then the fusion of these gametes produces a 4n plant so this is evolution or speciation for you in just a single generation so a tetraploid can produce fertile tetraploid offsprings by self-pollinating or by mating with other tetraploids uh, then this is a new species formed it can either produce gametes uh, which can fuse together or it can um, reproduce via cross fertilization with other tetraploids now there is another example which is alloploids allopolyploidy allopolyploidy is a condition when two different species uh, they produce is a hybrid and the hybrid has abnormal chromosome complement uh, this is species a it is having six chromosomes species b is having eight uh, four chromosomes uh, so they produces gametes uh, three and two and then this becomes five uh, so the hybrid has five chromosome number and then they have wrapped up this thing by saying that some kind of further abnormalities in meiosis or mitosis occurs which results in a 2n cell with 10 chromosome number so this is a hybrid and uh, the chromosome sets are multiples of the basic set so this type of polyploidy is called allopolyploidy now here in this other example sometimes uh, the two different species one produces gametes normally the other produces gametes abnormally so the fusion of these gametes three and four makes seven uh, and sometime this uh, particular gamete is fused with the gamete produced by one of the parental species uh, and it makes 10 so here is one other explanation for this 10 figure and allo polyploidy so this was one mechanism for sympatric speciation sexual selection is another mechanism for sympatric speciation sexual selection is a process in which individuals choose their mates 
So sexual selection tends to um, pave way for non-random mating because the selection process is involved here. So if individuals of a particular phenotype uh, they keeps on breeding together then it will obviously alter the genotype and allelic frequency in the population. So there is evidence that sympatric speciation can also be drive by sexual selection and the clue for that is sichelid fish which is found in Africa's Lake Victoria now those sichelid fishes their speciation just exploded away and in a sh short span of time so many species uh, sigillate species originated from a single ancestral stock this lake ha was once home to as many as 600 species of sigillates uh, Genetic data indicate that these species originated within the last 100,000 years from a small number of colonizing species that arrived from other lakes and rivers. So suppose this is Africa's Lake Victoria and other ancestral stock arrived there ancestral stock from another river or sea and this ancestral stock then evolved into 600 different species and uh, this event took place a hundred and this event took place 100,000 years ago. Now the sigillate fishes that lives there, how did so many species, more than double the number of freshwater fish species known in all of Europe, more than double? the number of freshwater species found in all Europe they evolved in a single lake so One hypothesis is that subgroups of the original satellite population adapted to different food sources and the resulting genetic divergence contributed to speciation in the Lake Victoria. So it is uh, basically mm, somewhat similar to uh, what was hypothesized for the origin of those 14 species of finches on the Galapagos Island uh, that the ancestral stock arrived from the South American mainland uh, and then it got distributed into different parts on the Galapagos Island uh, and uh, they found different food items uh, and their big structure developed accordingly and they evolved into different species uh, so the same uh, uh, case must have applied here when the ancestral stock uh, arrived to that lake uh, and the individuals of the population they got uh, distributed in different areas of the pound and there they got different food items uh, and therefore this genetic uh, divergence occurred but sexual selection in which typically females select males based on their appearance may also have been a factor. Researchers have studied 
two closely related sympatric species of Sichlitza that differ mainly in the coloration of breeding males. What are these two different species? Uh, the breeding um, one species is Pundamilia, Pundamilia and the males of that species have blue tinged back whereas another species Pundamelia nairari these males have red tinged back so the males of one species have blue tinged back the males of another species have red tinged back and uh, their result suggests that mate choice is based on male breeding coloration can act as a reproductive barrier that keeps the gene pools of these two species separate uh, means uh, the some of the female animals are going to prefer the blue tinged males uh, whereas others are going to prefer the red tinged males uh, so this coloration this sexual selection process also uh, presents an example where the reproductive isolation can be ensured and the two populations or the individuals can uh, show genetic divergence with the passage of time the last one factor which is responsible for sympatric speciation is habitat differentiation suppose the individuals the populations are living in the same geographic locality but some of them are living near water others are living away from water some are living on the tree on the higher branches some are living on the lower branches uh, some are predators on one species of plant uh, infests one species of plant other infests uh, other species of plant uh, so their habitats are different from one another and as a result uh, these uh, individuals the members of the populations living in different habitats they doesn't find the opportunity to come close together and meet uh, and they usually meet within their habitat one of the example is the North American apple maggot fly Regulatis pemonella it is a pest of apples it feeds upon apples but this behavior uh, was adopted this uh, predation on apple was adopted by this maggot about 200 years ago when apple was introduced into that area by the European settlers uh, so before that time the ep the these maggots uh, they used to feed upon how thorn how thorn is another uh, plant uh, before the arrival of European settlers uh, and the apples in the area these maggots uh, they used to feed on the hawthorn now furthermore because apples mature more quickly than hawthorn fruit uh, natural selection has favored apple feeding flies with rapid development so those flies which have shifted their dining table from hawthorn to apples uh, they got greater uh, ability to develop at a fast pace it is because the food source which they use develops on itself very fast 
So these apple feeding populations now show temporal isolation. Temporal isolation when the breeding seasons are different from one another. Temporal is usually uh, related to time. Uh, so now these two populations, one that feeds on apples, the other that feed on hawthorn, they are reproductively mature or they are reproductively mm, ready at different times of the uh, year. So therefore their reproductive behaviors, their uh, receptability uh, for one another is um, not possible and this so this is the example of prezygotic isolation and the postzygotic isolation is in fact both are the examples of the prezygotic isolation the first one is the differences in the development of the fruits on the two plants uh, and therefore the differences in the growth of the two populations and secondly the time of the year where they are reproductively mm, mature and they are receptive to opposite sex researchers have identified alleles that benefit the flies the, that use one host plant but harm the flies that use the other host plant so now the there some alleles have evolved uh, which uh, helps uh, the flies that feed on apples uh, and the same alleles poses a threat when they change from apple eating behavior to how thorn fruit, uh, uh, fruit uh. the same is the case with the maggots that feed on hawthorn fruit if they change uh, their feeding habit to this one then the alleles which have evolved will eventually kill them so this is the end of the lecture thank you very much allah hafiz